Hello, Bobby Torres of Freightbox recording here. So people are constantly asking me, what monitors do you use? Do you use a subwoofer? What do you do for acoustic treatment? Do you use outboard gear? Well, the truth is for the past year and a half, I've been mixing mixes like this. And this. And even live mixes like this. If you have a look up. And this. All within this minimalist, budget, super straightforward home studio room and setup. With that being said, in this video, I'm gonna give you a thorough breakdown of my entire rig and room to prove to you that you don't need much to produce great results. Let's dive into it. All right, well, here it is, my simple, minimalist, basic home studio. Uh, now, I just wanna be clear, uh, when it comes to recording live drums and obviously reamping through a live tube amp that is loud as hell, I do all of that out of my project studio, which is not a part of my house currently. Although I do have plans on building a project studio uh, on my property. Right now, I'm still renting the same space that I've been renting for almost 20 years. And that space is nothing special. It's just a basic project studio with a few USB interfaces, a snake, and a handful of microphones. And again, even though I don't record here, I do all of my mixing in, again, this completely untreated, bare bones studio, if you can even call it a studio. Now, a little bit of backstory here. Um, I actually moved into this room when my girlfriend and I bought the house about a year ago, but I have been so busy working on the house itself, as far as renovations are concerned, that I have not treated this space. And as you could tell, I've hardly had time to even put up any artwork outside of a poster here and a poster here. But with that being said, it has not stopped me from getting work done and doing all of my mixing on this simple rig, which I'm gonna cover in a second. So before I get to the actual rig itself, let's just look at some of the fun stuff that I have going on in this space. Now, I hate clutter. I like a nice open space, and I'm trying to accomplish that feel even though this room really isn't that big. I used to have a giant bookshelf behind me, but I've decided to break up the shelf into three smaller shelves to create more space in the room so I could have a couch here and maybe shoot videos in a different location in this room. I have a basic shelf here that has some books, most of them are horror related. I'm a huge horror fan. Just reading facts about different horror films inspires me. So I've got my horror books here as well as some storage drawers underneath. Got a little reading couch here. And then I have another miniature shelf here that has some of my favorite VHS tapes that I've had since I was a kid. And I've got a TV that plays a constant loop of a bunch of my digitized VHS tapes. Around seven years ago, I've actually went through the process, which is kind of crazy. I actually digitized most of my horror collection. And that plays on a constant loop, not only here, but also at my project studio, which is um, off site. And of course, every grown man needs a beanbag chair. Sometimes when I need to take a break from mixing, I'll just chill out on the beanbag chair and watch some TV or even play some retro video games with this controller right here. I have a bunch of ROMs loaded on my mini computer that's hooked up to this TV. It's important to take breaks. Okay, in this corner, I have another shelf with some cool Batman memorabilia. I'm a huge Batman fan. The classic uh, Fright Box mask and some old horror books from when I was a kid. Shout out to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. How, <laughs> how to Operate a Financially Successful Haunted House. I love this book as a kid. And then of course, a bunch of Goosebumps books. If you are a 90s or 80s kid, I'm sure you remember these well. And some basic storage for music related stuff. Or I should say um, computer related stuff. Some extra mouses or mice in here. The thing is when you're sitting behind a computer all day, sometimes you have to change it up. And sometimes I will actually switch to a trackball mouse. So I have it here whenever I need it. And some additional books and VHS tapes. Now, even though my VHS collection is in my basement, I have some of the tapes here just to inspire me. I'm actually more inspired by classic horror films than I am by modern music, believe it or not. That's just me. So before we get to the rig, I'm just gonna go over here, so I'm thorough. I have drawers with all of my hard drives, both for my video archives, as well as all of my Pro Tools sessions from every session I've ever recorded. And in my closet, not too exciting, I have my uh, workout equipment. Yes, I actually do all of my working out in this room, uh, minus running. I do not own a gym membership. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. Right here, 
is where I've been doing all of my mixing over the course of the past year and a half. And uh, people ask me all the time, um, you know, what kind of monitors do I use? Do I use a subwoofer? What kind of outboard gear do I use? Well, my monitors could not be any simpler. They are a pair of IK Multimedia micro monitors connected directly to a Steinberg UR242 two channel interface, which is connected to Mac mini, the Intel version. And that is my entire rig. I don't use outboard gear here or at my project studio. Everything I've been doing over the past 15 years has been done 100% in the box. I don't even use any controllers. Uh, for live sound, I prefer to work on an iPad or on a physical control surface. But for mixing, you know, regular audio mixing, I don't use any of that stuff. I just use a mouse and a keyboard. Now, if you notice, I'm using an ultra wide monitor. And to be honest with you, the only reason why I'm using this is so when I do my live streams, I can have everything on one screen. To me, it's a lot easier than having a dual monitor setup. But if I were only mixing and not doing any YouTube or working with members of my Freightbox Mix Trip community, I'd probably be using a smaller monitor. But it's simpler for me to just have one giant wide monitor so I can have my Pro Tools session up while still streaming and seeing my software for streaming simultaneously. Another thing I want to note here is people ask me about DI boxes all the time. You do not need a DI box if your interface has an unbalanced input. I have my uh, guitar cable connected all of the time. So when I'm inspired to write or record guitars, all I have to do is plug into this cable right here and I'm good to go. And of course, in the second input, I have my Shure SM7B connected at all times. I'm a huge fan of convenience and efficiency. And when I work, I just want to sit down, get to work and not have anything going on between me and my project that I'm working on. No fancy stuff, just straight to the point. Also, I have this Lament configuration that has a bunch of flash drives, which admittedly just has horror related stuff on it, no music related stuff. And that's it. Right now, I just have a basic pre-production session loaded up. Just a basic pre-production session for a new King Kelly song with some basic MIDI drums and uh, DI tracks the same stuff that most of us are working with. Now, admittedly, the most expensive thing in this entire room is this desk, which is actually a standing desk. So if I press this button, the desk, if you look, is raising itself. Now, the thing is, I'm getting older and sitting down behind a desk for long periods of time is really not a good idea for your back. So I decided to invest in this standing desk, which was not cheap, but definitely worth it. Also, because I'm working out of one room, I want to be able to have a rig that's modular. So if I need to move it to the other side of the room to film, you know, against a green screen or something like that, I can easily do it. It's on casters. And that's it. I know most people are not going to believe this. We are all fed this disinformation that we need to have fancy speakers, a perfectly acoustically treated space, outboard gear even. And honestly, it's complete baloney. All you have to do is understand production as a whole. And most importantly, understand what music should sound like in your space. Even if you're using a basic pair of earbuds and just stock plugins, you should be able to produce 100% professional results if you're focusing on the right things. When I work in this space, I'm not thinking about, oh, I need a subwoofer. Oh, I need to treat the flutter echo. I really don't care. I get right to work and that's how I get projects done, even though this room is less than ideal. But I must say, I still love the vibe. So there you have it. That is my home studio setup that I've been using for the past year and a half. No acoustic treatment, just a two channel interface, a couple of IK multimedia micro monitors, some plugins, and that's about it. Now, I'm not saying to never treat your room and that acoustic treatment's bad and that gear is bad. That's not the point of this video. The point is to demonstrate and prove to you that you don't necessarily need high-end gear or even acoustic treatment to achieve 100% professional results. I made it happen because I understand production as a whole, and I want you to understand production as a whole because that's the true secret to achieving pro-level results within any environment, whether it's a budget project studio or a pro studio. The problem is so many of us home studio owners get caught up making these same mistakes over and over and over again, completely missing the point, losing the plot, and focusing on things that make no difference at the end of the day. Now, I don't want this for you. I want you to produce great results with the gear you're currently using. And because of this, I've put something together called my Polish Production Checklist. The checklist is an extremely straightforward PDF guide that outlines my my workflow for producing great results as a whole so that you can easily copy this workflow and produce pro level results in your home studio, regardless of the gear that you're using or even the space that you're working in. That even includes just a basic laptop and 
earbuds. My polished production checklist is absolutely free for you to download right now by clicking the link below. Again, click the link and it's yours right now. Now to further prove to you that you do not need high-end gear to produce pro-level results, I'm linking a video above in the card where I record an entire song from start to finish using a budget USB interface completely recorded within non-studio spaces. Again, the link to the video is in the card above and even in the video's description below. So if you're interested in watching me record a song and fully produce a song using the same gear that you probably have already, I highly recommend checking out the video. I think you'll find it informative and hopefully inspiring. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Until next time, Flutter Echo, happy mixing. <laughs>